it's not exactly a well-kept secret that the Spigot Scoreboard API is really not the best thing out there when it comes to adding a scoreboard to your server. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you a different way using an API that I've written that will help you make a better scoreboard for your entire server or for specific players, so let's dive right in. Hello everyone, my name is Jordan, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I do all sorts of videos like this one about Minecraft and Spigot coding. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down here and turn on notifications so you can see more uploads like this that'll maybe give you some new ideas for your server or teach you some new things about plugin development. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this API works. So I've got the GitHub library pulled up right here. As you can see, the library is called JScoreboards. Um, you can see all the info here. There's this little Jitpack button which you can click on and this will take you over to a service called Jitpack Pack, this is how you'll integrate J scoreboards into your plugin. And once you're over on Jitpack, you can find the latest release. For me, it's 1.0.0, and I'll click on Get It Here, and it'll scroll down to the information that you need to add it into your project. So for me, I'm gonna use Maven, so I'm gonna take this repository and this dependency, and I'll add that to my palm.xml file in my project. And as you can see, I've got my palm.xml file open right here. You can see the repository for Jitpack and the J scoreboards dependency as well. Make sure to find the latest release. Again, I'll link the GitHub and subsequently the Jitpack down in the description below. You can just head over to Jitpack and find the latest release, click on get it and copy everything you need to add this into your project. Now that we have J scoreboards added to our project and before we write any code, I wanna explain a little bit about how this API is organized so that you can understand the code we're about to write. There are two different types of scoreboards. There is a global scoreboard and a per player scoreboard. The global scoreboard shows the same text to everybody who's added to it, whereas the per player text is customized based on the player it's being shown to. After we go over the global and the per player scoreboard types, at the very end of the video, I'll show you how to add a prefix to a player's name and change their color of the name, and this is done using scoreboard teams. We'll get into that after we talk about each of the scoreboard types. Within each of these scoreboard types, the per player and the global, there are two subtypes as well, the method-based approach to making a scoreboard and the functional-based approach. We'll get into each of these as we write the code, so let's dive right in. So let's start writing our code. I've got a J global scoreboard variable, and when our plugin starts, we're going to set that equal to a new J global scoreboard. Then inside of our constructor, we need to add two different suppliers. One is for our title and the other is for the lines of the scoreboard. A supplier is just something our scoreboard can ask for data from, which in our case is the title or the lines of the scoreboard. You can write this in code using parentheses here. So we do two parentheses, a dash, a greater than sign, some curly braces. This first one is the title supplier. So we're just gonna return a string called title. We're gonna do a comma after that first supplier. This next one is our line supplier. And then we're going to, inside of this, return arrays.asList. So we're gonna do a list of strings here. And this is the lines of our scoreboard. Now I'm using arrays.asList here, but you can use any other list so long as it has strings in it. We'll type in hello world on the first line. And one of the cool features about the scoreboard is that all of the color codes are supported using the and symbol. So this will be a light red here. We're gonna say line two in red. And just like that, we have our scoreboard. Next, once we've created our scoreboard, we need to add individual players to it. I've created this add to scoreboard method that is called for every single online player when the server starts and when a new player joins the server. Inside of this, we can just call scoreboard.addPlayer and then pass in that player. One other thing to note inside of the add to scoreboard method, when you have a functional scoreboard, this is one that uses suppliers, you need to call scoreboard.update scoreboard whenever you think that the data on the scoreboard needs to change. If your scoreboard data is constant and never changes, this is something you really don't need to call. And now I'm in game and you can see our scoreboard has appeared on the right. You can see that line two is colored in red like we set it up to be and everything is working great. And you can see just how easy this was. There was almost no code involved. All we had to do was create the scoreboard and add players to it. So that's how to create your global scoreboard that shows the same text to every player on your server. Before we move on to the per player scoreboard, I wanna show you the method based global scoreboard as well. This one is super easy to set up. We just have to change J global scoreboard to J global method based scoreboard and then set up our constructor as well. Our constructor inside of this one will not have any options. So we can just get rid of that as an empty constructor. And now to set the lines in the scoreboard, we just have to say scoreboard.setLines and we can actually pass in our same list of strings here. So we're gonna say, hello world. And then we're going to say, let's say in green this time, line two with another exclamation point. We can also set up our title here. So we'll say scoreboard.setTitle. Uh, this is a title and there we go. In this case, you actually don't have to call scoreboard.update scoreboard anymore. We can just get rid of that line of code because whenever set lines or set title is called, this method is called for you. And you can see those changes have reflected on our scoreboard using the method-based approach. So when exactly should you use the method-based scoreboard or the function-based scoreboard? 
Well, it depends. I found that when you use the global scoreboard, the method-based approach is often the best way to do it because you can just set the lines of the scoreboard at any time and it feels a little more natural for that type of scoreboard. And then in terms of the functional approach, I actually really like to use this when it comes to the per player scoreboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that code looks like. We're gonna change our scoreboard variable to J per player scoreboard here. And then we're going to also set that in the on enable. Inside of the constructor for the per player scoreboard, it also takes two things that look similar to suppliers, but these are actually called functions. The difference is that we write the player variable into the parentheses here, and this will allow us to access the player that this scoreboard title or the lines are being shown to. The rest is very simple. We can just write out our title here. So our title is going to be the display name of the player. And we're going to say their name and then a hello. We'll follow that up with our lines function here. And then we're just going to return the same arrays as list. Maybe in this case, we want to get the player's level and then say that's their level there. And then on the second line, we could say in green, hello with an exclamation point, just so that we can have some color in there. From there, we also have to re-add that update scoreboard method in the add to scoreboard method that we removed before for the method-based approach. I know that can be a little confusing. Just know that when you have the functional scoreboard or the one that doesn't have the word method in the name of the class, you have to call this update method for your scoreboard changes to take effect. And then when you have the method-based scoreboard, you do not need to call this. Uh, it's called for you whenever you change the content of your scoreboard. One thing I recommend here is setting up a runnable that will run every about half second and that will call the update scoreboard method so that if you have any data that changes on the sidebar here, uh, like the player's level in our case, it'll make sure that's reflected on the scoreboard whenever that changes. It's up to you when you wanna call that update scoreboard method. I wouldn't recommend calling it too frequently or else you're gonna have a weird flicker that you've probably seen on other servers before. And back on the server, another time here, you can see our per player scoreboard has taken effect. I've got my name on the sidebar there, as well as my level 30 that I have, and the green hello as well. So by now, I hope you're getting a sense for how easy it is to use this API and how simple it is to show a per player scoreboard or a global scoreboard. So let's wrap up the scoreboard section of this video by switching the per player scoreboard over to the method-based approach as well, so you can get a feel for how that works. Again, we'll start by renaming our class to per player method based scoreboard. That's the difference between these types. And then we can copy that into the constructor and remove all of our parameters inside of it as well. Now, the main difference between the method based approach of the per player scoreboard and the global scoreboard is that when you update the title or the lines, you need to pass in a player object. So that means we'll actually change the lines of our scoreboard inside of the add to scoreboard method. So we're going to say scoreboard.set title for the player. We'll set this to hello, and then we'll pass in their display name here. And then we'll set the lines of the scoreboard as well. So this is super simple. We can just say set lines for the player and then pass in either a repeated list of strings just like this separated by commas, or we could also pass in a list of strings like the functions did. We'll let our first line be a colored uh, hello with a few exclamation points. And then the second line, again, be the player's level. And you can see I've typed all that up right here. And in game, you can see all of that reflected right here using the method based per player approach. So just to recap, I recommend using the method based approach for your global scoreboard and the functional or supplier based approach for your per player scoreboard. This is because you can just add a player to the scoreboard and then the lines will automatically be updated for them when they see the scoreboard. But this is really down to my personal preference. You can do any which way you want. That's why I've provided all of these options for you in the API. So with those scoreboard types out of the way, let's go over how to add a prefix and a color to the player's name above their head and in tab using scoreboard teams. We're gonna create a team variable at the top here. This is going to be a J scoreboard team. We'll just call it team here. And then to initialize the object, we're gonna set team equal to scoreboard.create team. This is the exact same on all four of these scoreboard types. Inside of this method, we're gonna pass in the name of the team, which I'm gonna call admin. The prefix here, or the display name, which I'll do admin in a color red with a space. And then we can also optionally pass in the chat color. This is the color of the team and will change the glowing outline when a player is glowing. It'll also change the color above the player's name rather than just adding a prefix to their name. I know this team says admin, but we're just gonna add every single player on the scoreboard to this team by calling team.addPlayer inside of the add to scoreboard method that we have in our class here. And you can see these changes here. I have my admin prefix and my name is in red. And as you can see, I've actually changed the color of the team name here to dark purple. You can change this to anything you like and the prefix will stay the same color as what you type in with the color codes. And that's player prefixes using teams with my J scoreboards API. If you have any questions about the API, go ahead and leave a comment or join our Discord server. You can ask all sorts of questions there and get help with your code. You can also leave a GitHub issue if you find bugs in the scoreboard here. I'll do my best to keep it up to date as I see those come in and I get bug reports. So please, if you have any trouble with it, let me know so I can make those changes as needed. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can get more videos like this one in your subscription feed. In fact, YouTube actually tells me that this is a video you'll want to watch next, so I'll see you right over there.